The global Black Lives Matter movement has this week gained an unlikely supporter. Queen Elizabeth II. The support of the monarch for the movement for racial equality was revealed by Sir Kenneth Elisa, a senior representative of the Queen and the first black Lord Lieutenant of Greater London. Kenneth Elisa told Channel 4... I have discussed with the royal household this whole issue of race, particularly in the last 12 months since the George Floyd incident. It's a hot conversation topic. The question is, what more can we do to bind society to remove these barriers? They, the royal family, care passionately about making this one nation bound by the same values. He was asked explicitly, does this mean um, that the Queen supports the principles of the Black Lives Matter movement? And Sir Kenneth said, The answer is easily yes. This story made it to the front pages of both The Times and The Telegraph. Lots of people think this is a big bit of surprising news. Do you think this is significant? Come on, Michael, what do you think? Look, she was the monarch. She was the monarch during the 1950s. So she'll have been queen for 70 years quite soon, I think, right? Is that right? I think, I think, I think it's mid 50s. Anyway, you know, she was, she was the heir apparent that she was the, you know, the next in line when Britain was in, and she was young, I'm sure she wasn't fully on top of all the facts, but when Britain was dealing with the Mau Mau insurgency in Malaya and 150,000 people were killed because they wanted to effectively end a system of economic and and racial apartheid in their country, and it was repressed brutally by the British. Very similar thing happened in uh, Malaya, previously about Kenya, elsewhere in Malaya, there was a similar insurgency put down, it's called the Malaya Emergency from 45 to about 51, 52, and uh, again, you know, the, the tactics you see used by the U.S. in Vietnam, Agent Orange, concentration camps, uh, torching, torching forest. Uh, by the way, the British were using that in India in the, in the 19th century. That was being pioneered by the British after the Second World War, and the Americans would imitate that in Vietnam. That was when she was, you know, the, a princess and a queen. So I, I don't quite understand what's changed. You know, Black Lives Matter now, but they didn't matter when Britain was fighting the the Mau Mau insurgency in Kenya in the 50s. I guess now it's because the culture's changed, right? That's the answer. And that's why she says what she does. Is the queen personally racist? I have no idea. You know, I've never met the lady. You hear some nice things about her. You see some, hear some bad things about her. And I'm a Republican, Michael. You know this. I'm sure our audience knows this. But I thought it was quite touching how her visit to Grenfell was talked about. Because I remember watching that at the time thinking, wow, she's she's braver than most of our political class, certainly Theresa May. Uh but I, I think the idea that she supports Black Lives Matter is ridiculous. She's the she's the unelected sovereign for a bunch of countries which we colonise, which are primarily comprised of black people. You know, if you think their lives matter so much, let them choose their own head of state. Uh, so I, I, I find it quite strange. You know, this is, but again, it just feeds into this bizarre mythos that we have in Britain. Uh, you know, Britain fought for democracy in the Second World War. No, it fought against fascism, hugely important. But we didn't fight for democracy because we had 2.5 million Indians fighting for us. And the people who'd been elected as the politicians effectively to lead that country, the Congress Party, were in prison. Gandhi's wife died in prison, right? So this idea that, oh, well, they were fighting for democracy. How could they be fighting for democracy when the elected politicians were, in, were incarcerated? So I don't think she supports, she supports Black Lives Matter. No, I think it's a PR stunt. Uh, but equally, I, I don't know her personal views on, on race either. So I'm not going to denigrate her. I suppose there's two different angles here aren't they by the way the coronation was in 1953 there are there are two angles one is do we really believe the queen is a committed anti-racist i'll sit on the fence on that one as you say aaron there's quite a lot of evidence from the past that she shouldn't really um, be considered in that category the other is what does this say about the success of blm that even the queen has to say she supports it in in principle now one argument will be the sort of cynical one which is to say that even if the queen can say she supports it, it's become meaningless But there is quite a strong pushback in newspapers such as The Telegraph and sometimes in the comment pages of The Times to say that even the principles behind Black Lives Matter are flawed because even on the most sort of mainstream interpretation of what they stand for, they believe structural racism exists and they're opposed to it. Now, there will be lots of people, especially in government, who who say, no, structural racism doesn't exist. This whole idea um, that we need to say that Black Lives Matter is, is mistaken because as it stands, Black Lives Matter, just as much as White Lives Matter, we should stop talking about race. Now, the fact that the Queen has to fall into quite proactively and positively the camp where she's saying, no, we do need a movement such as Black Lives Matter. Those principles are important. It doesn't necessarily say much about her, but I do think it says something about the success of the BLM movement. Do you think I'm being reasonable there, Aaron. 
No, I, I agree with you entirely. I, I think it's from I think it's remarkable. I mean, does she, she doesn't need to do this, right? You know, I mean, I don't wish her ill well, but she's not she's not going to be the monarch for much longer, right? I mean, she's what ninety five. Okay, let's say she lives to one hundred and five. Defies defies all the statistics. You know, she doesn't need to do this. She's in a very safe situation. We're not going to become a republic in the next ten years. William and well, particularly Will, William. Yes, I could see why he would do it. I think from a perspective of political. Again, I don't know if he believes it or not. But from a perspective of political expediency and public relations, you'd expect him to do it. But it is a surprise for her to say it. You know, I, I, I'm kind of surprised, you know, it's separate to say, am I am I sure she really means it? I, I don't know. Is it a courtie that said this is probably a wise thing to say? Possibly, yes. But I don't think she had to do it. Uh, and, and like I say, I do think it speaks to the, 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 the strength of the movement. And also, Michael, you know, the Commonwealth is really important to her, apparently, as a personal thing. So I think for her to say, I'm, I'm the head of state, uh, not just of the Union, not just of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, but also its crown dependencies. Um, and of course, the Commonwealth, however this long title is, I can't remember all of it. Uh, and I think for you to be uh, such a prominent figure in the Commonwealth, which obviously includes so many countries from the global south, you, you probably do have to say something like this. But I'm, I'm still surprised. I am still really surprised because like you say, Michael, it really does defang, you know, people booing footballers that take the knee, for instance. I mean, it might um, it might boil the piss of all the right people, which is you know better than nothing. I think so. I don't think it's a bad th- I, I, look. I don't think it's a bad thing that she's done, and it's, it's a really the fact that it's happened is really positive. Uh, do I think she really means it? I have no idea. I'm just sort of trying to contextualize the British royal family and the in the, in the, in the within the broader history of racism and anti racism. It's never been overtly anti racist, uh, but it, it's a funny one. It is a really funny one. Um, William, you'd expect it lesser. So you know, maybe maybe she did go and say, who knows? Maybe that now Prince Philip's gone, and you know he was <laughs> he was quite particular about these things. I mean, you can't imagine Prince Philip saying it, right? But maybe she has her own views, and she's not really communicated them. Or maybe she's changed her views. There was a great rumor recently, actually, Michael. I don't know if you saw this when Cristiano Ronaldo signed for Manchester United. That you know there was a great rumor going round that was being spread by Manchester United's sort of pretty official-looking Twitter accounts. Some were verified saying that uh, she'd bought 100 Ronaldo shirts and they were all signed and she's a Man United fan. So ah. maybe this is like that, you know. Why would, she need, not. A, why would she need 100? Just because she can, because she's the queen, I suppose. They were like the first 100 printed, you know, you know, Ronaldo's shirts. They're the number seven, of course, since he's gone back. And then, you know, there are people tweeting, you know, HRH has read all this nonsense. Maybe, you know, I mean, make that, that makes no, no sense either. So maybe. But I find it weird if she's 95 and like, yes, you know, Sorry, Man United Ronaldo. have got a new number seven. Unlikely.